All right, this is the last part of the three-part amphibian notes. So next up is threats to amphibians. Um, habitat loss is considered the biggest threat to frogs and a lot of other amphibians. So small wetlands um, that were being used for breeding areas by frogs are being filled in, drained, um, and developed into whatever humans want. Um, marshes and swamps are being rapidly replaced with parking lots, strip malls, and other re residential developments. Like if you think about where we live and how many neighborhoods are going up, these aren't necessarily like marshes and swamps, but they are home to amphibians as well as many other species. Um, and they're being turned into giant neighborhoods. Um, small wetlands such as ditches, backwaters, temporary pools, and even mud puddles are vitally important to local amphibians and many people fail to realize the importance of them in the biotic community. So for in our area, all these neighborhoods that are springing up are taking over um, these amphibians and other species habitats and um, are hurting them and making them move elsewhere or killing them off completely. And for Georgia especially, we want frogs and toads because they eat mosquitoes. Um, so it's not a species that we want to kill off, right? Um, Another thing that's harming amphibians, the moist permeable skin of frogs and other amphibians is very sensitive to pollutants, which is one reason why frogs are considered a good indicator of species, uh, indicator species for ecosystem health. Um, so if they're dying off or hurting, it's a good um, indicator um, of how the ecosystem as a whole is doing health-wise. So industry, mining, agriculture, and the application of even lawn and garden chemicals all release toxins into the environment and can harm these um, animals. And many of these toxins can affect the tadpole and adult survival rate. So for, you know, a thing that you can do yourself and your parents is, you know, what kind of chemicals are you using to take care of your lawn? Are you using things that are harmful to these creatures? Are you using things um, that are more helpful to the environment? Um, so it's just things, like steps like even small steps like that, that can be um, a positive change for the environment. Right. Other problems in facing amphibians would be considered a wide range of fungal, bacterial, and viral diseases that infect amphibians. So yes, even um, amphibians get viruses, get bacterial infections. Um, there's also tapeworms, like we talked about several units ago, um, can cause serious limb malformations, like you can see in these pictures here. These guys all have messed up limbs. Um, Obviously, climate change and drought are going to affect them. Um, a lot of frogs will also be slaughtered for frog leg trade and they'll also be captured for pet trade. Um, so those are several problems face these guys. All right. Just some now moving on to some weird, interesting record book kind of amphibians. The largest amphibian is the Japanese giant salamander that can weigh up to 140 pounds and be six feet long. The one in this picture obviously is not quite that big, but um, he is still a very giant salamander. Um, the Goliath frog is the world's largest frog. Um, it lives in Africa where they spend their days eating insects, crustaceans, fish, and other amphibians. Um, it can grow up to 13 inches in body length, and but its outstretched legs can reach over two and a half feet in length. Um, they only weigh about seven pounds, but they can jump up to 10 feet in a single bound. So I'm kind of really glad these guys aren't native to Georgia. Right. The smallest amphibian is the Brazilian golden frog. It'll only weigh a few grams, and it's about 9.8 millimeters in length, so like a centimeter, so very tiny. Um, this is not a dime, but it's smaller than a dime. Right. And then the last thing is, what has a frog done for you lately? So frogs eat pest insects. One dwarf puddle frog, which is not a frog native to Georgia, but that's the fact I could find, um, can eat up to 100 mosquitoes in one night. Similarly, frogs in Georgia are going to eat mosquitoes, which I am personally very thankful for. Um, frogs also provide us with food. Um, I personally don't eat them. I have tried frog legs before. To me, they tasted like chicken. That's what other people claim to say, too. Um, However, I don't really intend to eat more frog legs. Um, frogs are also used in medical research to test new drugs. Um, and then frog skin has benefited our pharmacological research because um, chemicals in the skin of a South American frog provide a painkiller that's more powerful than morphine and is also found less addictive. Um, so there are some, you know, moral issues that some people have with testing um, on animals or using them as test subjects, but there is some benefits um, of, that we have found in the scientific research of these um, using frogs and studying them. So anyway, that's the, it for the amphibian notes. Let me know if you guys have any questions.